from the presence of the Lord. From the presence of the Lord. I want you to jump to verse number number 10. Jump to verse number 10. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and saying to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he friend from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then jump to verse number 38. Is it 38? The last, second last verse. Thank you, Lord. Second last verse. All right. Then the sorry, the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and took vows. Seventeen. Now the Lord and prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Chapter two, verse one. Then Jonah praying to the Lord is gone from the fish belly. From the fish belly and said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction. And he answered me out of the belly of the shell. I cried and you heard my voice. Then the second last verse. Second last verse. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have found. Salvation is from the Lord. Verse 10. So the Lord spoke to the fish. And it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Let's read many verses today. Chapter 3 verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time saying uh -huh, arise go to Nineveh the great city and preach to it the message that I tell you you look at these ones they are the same ones God and spoken to Joseph to Jonah arise go to Nineveh now uh, I want us verse 2 verse 2 arise go to Nineveh verse 3 sorry verse 3 so Jonah arose, went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Go. So the people of Nineveh believed God. Proclaimed a fast and put sacrifice from the greatest to the least of them. Let's go back now to the book of uh, Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. We go back to Joel chapter number 2. Verse number Twenty-eight to thirty-two, Joel chapter two, verse twenty-eight to thirty-two. And it shall come to pass after one that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 29, and also on my main, main servants and on my main servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. Blood and the fire, blood and the fire and the pillars of smoke. That one, then sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion, deliverance, in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance. And the Lord has said, among the remnant of whom 
the Lord the cause among the remnant of whom the Lord the cause. If you read from verse number uh, 25, it talks about where God was talking to us about restoring the wasted years. And I spoke a lot about the, what the Lord, what it exactly means when God talks to us about restoring uh, the wasted years. And I remember saying last week that when God comes to restore you, he does not come to bring back what you lost. He comes to bring you back to where he intended you to be. He comes, you, he comes to give you what he decided from the very beginning that you should have. And we saw a number of things that there are so many kind of blessing that was supposed to be your blessing but they never got into your hands. Aziko fika kwa mikono yako. At some point they were diverted. Others were hijacked. Others were attacked. Others were destroyed. Things came up in life and you, your position was moved. And you know, your life was no more the way it was supposed to be. Not because that's what you wanted, but because there was either spiritual attacks, there was human attacks, there was a demonic attack, diversion of your blessing. So the locust destroyed what was supposed to be yours. The flying locust, the swarming locust, the clawing locust, they came and they destroyed that which was yours. We saw that there is that which was destroyed. Even before you get it, it gets destroyed. So you even never got to know what it would have grown to be. Others were, were destroyed when they are flowering. So you never did really got to see the harvest. Others saw the harvest, but it never came to you. Najua, there are times, sometimes things come and they are so close to you. And you see, this is now my blessing. But something happens and you never enjoy the blessing. Sometimes you feel the pain of seeing another person enjoying that which was meant to be yours. One main, very painful thing in life, it is to see somebody enjoy what you very well know it was supposed to be yours. And I know that many times one or the other, uh, you or rather you have found yourself at one time or the other at a point whereby you are seeing somebody else enjoying that which was yours. It is not a pleasant thing. So God says that you restore the position. You restore the possessions. You will restore the privileges. You restore the opportunities. And you go back to the ears. And I prayed and I pray again even today. That God goes back into your ears. Into even when you were a child. Sometimes I desire it goes back even into my father's ears that even what my father lost, which was supposed to be my inheritance, I may get it in my days. And I pray again today that God goes back into your life, even into your parents' life, that which was supposed to be your inheritance according to God, not according to men, according to God, whatever was supposed to be your inheritance, I pray that you will get it in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember today we are talking about spiritual restoration. When God now spoke to the people about restoration, he kindly, he, he swiftly moves on and talks to them about Pouring unto them the spirit of the Lord. And before we get now to pour into them the spirit of the Lord, we come to Jonah. Jonah is a man who, who, who needed, whom God worked on him and restored him. But I want us to understand who was Jonah. Jonah was a servant of God. Jonah was a believer. Jonah loved God very much. But at some point, Jonah walked in disobedience. He loved God very much. He was a servant of the Lord in every way. He doing what was right. He didn't do what was required of him. But there was something that was not so good. He walked in disobedience to God. And want us to look at this. Why did he walk into disobedience to God? 
it is because of what God exposed him to. God exposed him to something that was not pleasant. God exposed him. I want to ask a fantasy if it's practical, please reduce the main for me a little bit. It's very high for me. Just the main, the main, the main volume. Aha, uh -huh. just a little bit in Jesus' name. That's good. Now, look at this. Uh, Josh, uh, Jonah, I've said he was a man of God. He was a servant of God. He loved God. He loved uh, to walk with God. He loved to serve God. He is a man me people admired. He is a man people even emulated. I am sure in his time there are so many people wanted to be like Jonah. I am sure in his time there are so many people who believed because of Jonah. But at some point he walked in disobedience. But I want us to look at this. Why did he walk in disobedience? Jonah walked in disobedience because of at that particular time what God exposed him to was not nice it was not pleasant God decided him and decided to send him into a city that was very wicked so God gave him a very handy task God gave him a very handy job God gave him a very challenging job and Jonah looked at it and looked back and he saw, I think this one is very challenging. This one is very tough. This one I feel I have no energy to do it. And sometimes brothers and sisters, you find at that time where what is you are facing is challenging. You love the Lord, yes. You want to serve the Lord? Yes. You want to do what is right? Yes. But the challenge ahead of you is tough. The challenge ahead of you, you feel it's heavier than you. And it could be a challenge in the family. And it could be a challenge in the business. And it could be a challenge, a financial challenge. It could be a challenge at the place of work. You love the Lord. Within you, you love the Lord. But the temptation is tough. And it is real. It's, it's not something there in the spirit. It is something you are facing practically. And you know, I'm remembering about Jesus. He found himself in such a situation. Akawa mambo yare anakutana nayo ni mazito. And at some point, he spoke and said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh is overwhelmed. The mind cannot handle it. Within me, I want it. But I am overwhelmed. What I am facing is too tough for me. I'm not able to handle it. And he turned it to God and asked him, Eloi, Eloi, Lama Shabakidani, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? I look at Jesus and he is talking to God and he is saying, my father, all the people have forsaken me. Even you, do you want to forsake me? Have you left me? You are my last hope. So he is, he is talking to him. He is God. He is anointed. He has the power. He has the grace. He has everything. But what he is facing is too serious. He talks to God and he says to him, Why have you forsaken me? Because at this point he feels alone. Have you ever been in a crowd but you feel alone? Have you ever been with many people allowed you but you feel alone? Have you ever found yourself even with the people who are smiling at you? They are trying to encourage you but within you you feel you cannot understand where I am. You cannot understand what I am going through. You cannot understand what I am facing. You cannot understand my pain at this point. 
point Jesus has felt left. He has felt. He is feeling alone. He is even looking at God and he says, Father, at this point, I feel you have forsaken me. Tell me the reason why you have forsaken me. This is where I said the other day that when people look at the come to this point, they start looking at the sins they have committed. The flesh who are allowed you, they start telling you now it's time for you to repent. Some mothers don't want to associate themselves with you. Why? Because at this time, things are happening real negative in your life. Sometimes you are even going through shame. At this time where Jesus is asking this question, even those who received miracles from him, they don't want to get close to him. Because he is failing. He is failing. He is coming down. Things are not good. If I take you back before that, he had also spoken to the father and he said to him, Father, if it were possible, take this cup away from me. Why? The challenge, what was this cup before we get to her? Why? It was the task he had. Kazi ambayo amekua na imefika mari mekua mzito. Those who are married, sometimes you get to a point where you feel like even family mekua mzito. It's not easy. And you get to the point where by you're saying, I wish this cup can be taken away. Because brothers, life is a reality. After we come and jump and dance, we go to face life in the reality. If it is something painful, you feel real pain. It is not a spiritual pain. You feel real pain. It's financial challenge. You go through real pressure. You feel the pressure. So Jesus at this point, he says, this cup, take it away from me. I wish Lord God, I don't go through this. This is what he is saying. If there is something you can do, God, that for me to avoid this, and at this point, many quit. At this point, many give up. At the point when Jesus was feeling like giving up, he said, but Father, don't do my will. My will is you take away the cup, but don't do my will. My will is to give up, but don't do my will. My will is for to forsake this thing. But don't do my will. Let your will be done. I pray that somebody. Even when the challenge is very heavy. You will take courage to tell the Lord. God. Let your will be done in my life. This is where. Some people start thinking of committing suicide. This is where you look at your life and you say, I would rather die. I would be better dead than go through this. You look at yourself and you say, look at the shame that surrounds me. You look at yourself and you say, look at the trouble that I'm going through. You smile when you are with the people. But when you go and close yourself in the house, you start shedding tears. You start crying. Because the pain is real. So Jonah found himself at this point of realities. And he said, God, you are sending me to Nineveh. I am not going to go to Nineveh. I'm not ready to face the challenge at Nineveh. I am not ready to face the shame at Nineveh. I know the people of Nineveh, they will reject me. I am not going to go to Nineveh. So Bible says, John arose to free to Tarshish. He went down to Tarshish from the presence of God. This from the presence of God, what does it mean? It means from the will of God. It means from what God wanted him to do. It means from the kind of life God wanted him to live. 
I want you to remember this. Jonah is born again. Even at this point, Jonah is born again. At this point, Jonah is a preacher. Even at this point, Jonah is anointed. But the burden is heavy. The challenge is real. And he says, God, I think this is not for me. Somebody else can do this. Let another person do this. He came to this point and he was asking, why me? I would rather go to Taoshis. Taoshis is better. Taoshis I will be received. There's a statement they say, be where you are celebrated, not where you are tolerated. Sometimes that statement is not true. Sometimes God wants you in a place you are not celebrated. Can we speak it real? Sometimes you are not celebrated in your family. Sometimes you are not celebrated in the church. Sometimes you are not celebrated by your own children. But you cannot go. Sometimes in your place of work you have done everything and you are not celebrated. And God sometimes wants you in that place where you are not celebrated because some victories have to be real victories that everybody will look at it and say, we trying to bring him down, but it was not practical because God was with him. Sometimes God will bring you to this place where you'll be fought by the devils, by men, by witches, by friends, and even by close people because God wants to manifest his glory and his victory. And at the point, you cannot quit. Running away from that, you are running away from your victory. Running away from that, you are running away from your glory. Running away from that, you are running away from your trophy. You know what? Generals have scars to show. Generals have stood in warfare, in battlefield. They got these scars and they never ran away. They continue to fight even when they are injured. They continue to fight. They have injuries but they never gave up. They continue to fight until at the end of the day they are called generals of warfare. Generals of battle. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ in this place there shall be a general in the name of the living God. When they think you are down, you rise up and you say, I am not out yet. I'm not out. I'm not giving up. I'm not quitting. I know who I am. God is with me. As long as God is with me, I cannot give up. You cannot give up, brother. God is with you. God is on your side. He says, even though you find yourself in the fire, I will be with you. Fear not. Am I talking to somebody? So Jonah decided to go down to Talshis. God wanted him in Nineveh. But Nineveh is not nice. Sometimes God wants to be in church. But you feel things are not nice in church. I would rather, let me look for another pastor now. <laughs> let me look for another man of God now at this time. But the Lord says, I know how Nineveh is, Jonah. And I still want you. Where? Nineveh. Tell your neighbor you are needed in Nineveh. Ah, your crown is not in Talshis, it is in Nineveh. Your crown is not down there, it is in Nineveh. That place where you are not celebrated. That place where you are not seeing results. That place where things are not working. That place when the burden is heavy. That is where your crown is. And I pray in the name of Jesus that Jonah, you shall stick. He went down to Joppa. He looked for a Lord where they cannot trace him. Ha. He looked for a Lord where they cannot trace him. Somebody told me, I want even to cut off people. So I have decided I will not be in social media and I want to change even my life. So that nobody reaches me. Joppa. A road that they cannot trace you. 
and he found a ship to Tarshish. I want you to look at this. He found a ship to Tarshish, a convenient route. You know when you're in the waters, it is not easy for people to follow after you. By the time they look from boats and ships, you are very far away. He found for what? A ship. But I also want you to look at this. He paid his own fare. <laughs> he paid his own fare and went down into it. So he made his decision. He sat down and made his decision. After thinking about it, after looking at the situation, after looking at how things are, he paid his own fare and went down. Went down. You may be paying your fare to go down. Sometimes what sounds reasonable is not good for you. It may sound reasonable. It may sound safe. It may sound nice. It may sound good. But it may not be gone for you. At this point, Jonah, amefanya maesabu yake. Afefanya calculations yake. Na ameangaria kaona. Nikipitia hapa jopa. Na nikiingia kwa ship. Nikiingia kwa merikebu. Nikere muke. Awawezi wakanipata. Nitatokerezea. Tarishishi. We umefanya maesabu yako. Na uka Kaona nikipita hapa Nikifanya hii Once I do this Once I talk to this Once I connect with this This is where I will end But I tell you the truth When God has a reason And a purpose for your life No matter the route you take He will find you And I came to say to somebody Don't get to the point where God comes to force you To go where he wants you I like the way you are quiet he paid his fare. Ask your friend who paid your fare. He paid his fare to rebel against God. He paid his fare to run away from responsibility. He paid his fare to run away from the task. He paid his fare so that he may not do what the Lord has told him to do. He paid his fare because God wants him in Nineveh, but he feels Nineveh there are so much challenges. Nineveh there are a shame. Ni never there is no convenience. Ni never I feel like in ni never I will not get to my destiny quickly. So he paid this only fair. Reasons are good, they are enough. And he made his decision. It is okay sometimes to consider the reasons that are making you do what you're doing. Sometimes it may sound nice. But that may not be what God wants of you. It may sound convenient. But that it may not be what God wants of you. Many times the reasoning of a man. They feel like the leading of the spirit. Especially when in rebellion. Go down with them to Talshish with the presence of the Lord. Uh, from the presence of the Lord I mean. To go down from the presence of of the, you know the things that happens when he went into the ship at some point there was trouble there was trouble and why was the trouble in the ship because there is somebody who is running away from the presence of God you can have somebody who causes you trouble and at this point Things are bad in the ship. If you read down, you discover these men who are in the ship, they were sensitive in the spirit. And they thought, ha, maybe there is somebody in this place who is the cause of all this. So we are going to cast lots so that we identify with this man. To tapiga kula. So that we may see who is this person. And in the process, John is saying to them, don't trouble yourselves. It is I who is running away from the presence of God. And he's saying to them, I'll help you guys. For you to be safe, throw me into the waters. Suicide. He says, now let me die. 
let me die now. Uh, let me get even out of the shape. Throw me into the waters so that the tempest may come down, so that the storm may cool, so that you'll be safe. Let me die for you as sick. But I want to tell you the truth. Nobody can die for you. Jesus died for us all. Jonah says, throw me into the, into the water. I want you to look at something. I love the way God works. When God has a plan for you, even the rope will reject you. When God has a plan for you, even poison will not work in your stomach. When God has a plan for you, even men cannot kill you. When God has a plan for you, death will reject you. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the anointing of the Lord comes upon you this day that you will not die before your time. You will not die before you do what you are supposed to do. The hand of God comes upon you every that even when everything says you have to die David says, no, we can't take this one. So Bible says that God prepared a fish, a big fish. He prepared a whale. And when Jonah was cast into the water, he got into the mouth of a big fish and went into the belly of the fish. Oh my God. Look at this. What people were doing to kill you it will become your salvation. Oh, Kazato Barazi. You never got it. They are doing it to save themselves. You know, it is sound and good for these men. Look at how men can be selfish. They never told them repent. They never told them pray. They never told them now do something about it. They are telling him, they, they are agreeing with him, we are going to kill you. There are people who are busy killing you. But I pray in the name of the living God, anything done to you to terminate you, anything done to you to destroy you, it will become your salvation in Jesus' name. And declare a word of God even in your office. Oh my God, in your working place, in the place of your business, whatever is done to put to an end your progress, whatever is done to bring you down today, in the name of Jesus, let him become your salvation. Let him become your, uh, your redemption. That which was supposed to carry you, let him become your lifting. In the name of the living God, am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody in the house of the Lord? Whatever was meant to carry you, I announce in the name of Jesus, it will become your deliverance. It will become your lifting. It will become your redemption. You will not die before you do what you are supposed to do. Can somebody say yes? Can somebody say yes? I announce there are men here. If you die, there are others who will go to hell. If you die, there are people who will never get born again. If you die, there are people who will not get their help. If you die, someone will miss a husband. If you die, someone's future will be messed up. If you die, somebody's destiny will be destroyed. You cannot die now. I come in the name of the living God and I cancel every death that is not of God. I cancel every demonic death. Can somebody say amen? I cancel Pazotana. Whatever was meant to destroy you, whatever was meant to bring you down, whatever was meant to, to, to destroy your life, I announce right now in the name of Jesus Christ it will not have capacity over your life. Amen. So God prepare the fish. May there be a fish to receive you. May there be a fish to save you from drowning. May there be a fish to save you from drowning in the waters. Lift your hand and say, I will not die. Can you say again, I will not die. And the Bible says he was in the belly of the fish for three days. And in chapter 2, you will discover when he's in the belly of the fish, God preserved him there and he was praying in the belly of the fish. God uses a very extraordinary way. Humanly, scientifically, there is no way you can survive after being swallowed by an animal or a mammal. There is no way you can survive. But the supernatural way, 
The anointing of God will make you survive where under natural ways you cannot survive. I declare survival from danger. Oh my God, you're not hearing this. I declare survival from danger in Jesus' name. You will survive where others cannot survive under natural circumstances. Oh, Kazora Mashanda, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Even there in the belly, where and death you're supposed to die quickly because in the belly of the fish you cannot be able to breathe. You choke to death. But God, let me tell you something. When God will save you, it's not because you are very important, but it is because of his purpose in your life. May you become a man of purpose. You know, the problem is this. Why is Jonah going to down to Tarshish? Why is he running away? It is because he is selfish. He has not gotten to a point of living for the Lord. He is living for himself. He is thinking about himself. Your life is not just about yourself. Your life is about others and God. There are things that God will not do if he does they do them through you. And that is why at this point he says, Jonah, you cannot die because you are the one I have appointed to go to Nineveh. Sometimes back I asked one of my sons, who I prayed for and got born again. And I asked him, before we met, are there, is there anybody who has spoke, ever spoken to you about salvation? He said, me, he said to me, no. <coughs> I asked him, what about after we met? Have you ever asked somebody who is asking you whether you are born again and he want to preach to you about Jesus? He said, no. And I said, I want you to understand <clears throat> the plans of God and how destiny connections work. So that it means if we never met, you would never be born again. So even what you have now, you would not have become that. Because if we never met, let me tell you something. I don't know how you take this, but there is somebody here probably before we met, you would be dead by now. Because your salvation was tied to me particularly. You are help. There is something that God was to do in your life that could not have been done through somebody else. Never take lightly divine connections. Never take lightly associations that are spiritual. And remember we are talking about spiritual restoration. So God knows this. As much as he is sending him to Nineveh to give a negative prophetic message that in three days Nineveh will be destroyed, God knows this. My intention is not to destroy Nineveh. My intention is to save Nineveh. And this is the man that has the grace that I require for Nineveh. Oh God. There's somebody here you've been hiding yourself and you have the grace that is required to sort out certain things in this church. Spiritual restoration. There's somebody that there are things that God intends to do and they cannot be done through anyone else. But you're going to tell she's. And look at this. I said in the morning, God, I would rather turn myself towards you than you use the fish to take me to your will. It's easier to turn aloud and do the will of God than wait on God to push you into his will. At this time, Jonah has lost everything. At this time, Jonah has become nothing. I believe in the, in the belly of the fish, it is very uncomfortable. It is not a, play, a nice place to be. Just try to imagine about it. It can't be a nice place to be in. And at that point, that is when he is praying to God. 
And look at what God did. The fish went down. And uh, it enrobed him just a short distance, a walking distance to Nineveh. Because when God wants to use you, for whatever reason, even when you go to wind yourself, you get you there. You get you there. And when I'm talking about God using himself, using you, it does not necessarily mean using you to preach. Maybe you are the person that is supposed to educate a certain child. Maybe you are the person that is supposed to sort out a certain problem in the church. Maybe you are the person that is supposed to be the, that financial pillar and take away the shame. And you know it and you hear it and you feel it. Jonah when he is going to Taushish, he knows very well what God wants of him. There's somebody you know very well what God wants of you. But even with the information, you pay your affair to go down. The trouble is this, God don't get you back. But he may get you back in a very uncomfortable way. So, I want you to look at this. He is formatted on to dry land. Ha. And he walks. And at that point, God speaks to him again now. He told him, Jonah, you cannot escape. One time I made up my mind I would never preach again. And the Lord called at me and he said, You can't escape. And so every time I think I feel discouraged and I feel of quitting, the same ones come. I will still find you. So Jonah speaks to him again and he tells him, Go to Nineveh and tell them what I tell you. I have come to say to somebody here when spiritual restoration takes place it takes you back to the will of God. Praise the name of the living God. I say praise the Lord. Look at this. Spiritual restoration brings you back. Take this point. What does spiritual restoration do? Because at this point like, like I have said even though uh, Jonah is born again he is living in rebellion he is doing what he, he, he wants to do what does the, the Lord does not want him to do he is looking for what is popular he is looking for what is comfortable he is looking for what he think personally can benefit with he is thinking, looking for what he, what he thinks can make him grow faster but God is looking at his purpose God is looking at his plan. God is looking at his agenda. When uh, and, and restoration now comes to that, it may bring you back to the purpose of God. That's point number one. Spiritual restoration brings you back to the purpose of God. You are start doing what you are supposed to be doing. It may be uncomfortable, but you find it easy doing it. You find it nice doing it. You enjoy doing it. Oh my God, I pray that the Lord will get you to the place where, oh, even when there is trouble everywhere, within you, there is peace serving the Lord. Spiritual restoration brings you back to the purpose of God. You get to where Paul was saying, it is no longer high who lives, but Christ Jesus lives in me. May you get to the place whereby you live for the purpose of God. Thank you, Lord. Number two, spiritual restoration gives you back the joy of salvation. Do you know there are people, you are born again, but within you there is no real joy of remaining in salvation. You don't enjoy being in church. You force yourself. The problem is not in the church. Do you know, I came to discover this. 
Any time when people are fearing or when something is going wrong in the hearts of men, they blame the church, they blame the altar, they blame the pastor. They say it is because of the pastor. Pastor is not praying enough. The anointing is not flowing enough. Have you heard it of it or have you said it one time or the other? The joy of salvation is not there. I don't feel like going to church. It is not about the pastor. It is not about the church. It is something that is happening within your life. Sometimes you are listening to the wrong voice. Sometimes you are feeding yourself with the wrong food. Sometimes your mind is going to the wrong direction. David in Psalm chapter 51, I think verse number 11 or so, he says, the Restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Not take away your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. I'm born again, yes, but there is no joy. Because I'm going to tell she's and things are not all right. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Psalm 51, verse number 12. And uphold my uphold me by your generous spirit. <coughs> Be willing, Lord, to uphold me. So, spiritual restoration makes you rejoice. You know, I know that many of you, sometimes you force yourself to go to church. That's why sometimes I think I've stayed for too long without going to church. Let me go today. Sometimes you say, I don't want pastor to call me and ask me where I am, so let me go to church. But you don't feel like being there. something in you. You're, you're not rejoicing being in God. You are better. Some of you, you feel better in the world than in the church. You feel better with the people out there than with the people in the church. I pray that there shall be restoration. Can somebody say amen? Number three. Restoration causes everything else to be restored. That is why the Lord now in the book of Joel... He says to them, I'll pour out to you my spirit. I'll pour upon you my spirit. Why is he saying this? He says this because even if I restore to you the western years, and you're not restored spiritually, you will lose up everything again. Even if I give you anything, but within you, you are not restored. You don't have my spirit. You don't have my heart. You will still lose everything. So he says, he says to them, I'll pour to you. I, and it shall come to pass that afterward. Joel chapter 2 verse 28. That I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Because... It is the spirit of God that will help you rest in the place of God. It is the spirit of God that will help you rest in the place of God. Many of you think it is a car. Many of you think it is a good job. Many of you think it is a house. It is the spirit of God that will help you rest in the place of God. By the way, the more you get things without the spirit of God, the more they push you away from the presence of God. I have seen people who are very good when they had nothing, when they got something, they started now having time to enjoy themselves and to do everything else. When the spirit of God is not in you, the more you get things, the more they mess you. The more they mess you. I pray in the name of Jesus. You know, there are people who don't drink because they can't afford it. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you cannot have five women because you can't afford them. But the moment you feel I can afford, all hell breaks loose. Am I talking to anybody? Are you hearing this word? Lift your hand and say, Lord, give me your spirit. So, 
He says, I will, rest, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. You are sons and your daughters will prophesy. They, you know, prophesying is speaking the mind of God. They will speak the mind of God. They will not talk like anybody else. They will not be everywhere like anyone else. They will speak the mind of God. I pray that we avoid the modern Christianity and we go back to the roots and be founded on the roots of God. We are by every day you say, I have the spirit of God with me. I have the mind of God within me. I speak the mind of God. I do what the Lord wants me to do. Jesus says, I never do anything unless what I see my father doing. I never say anything unless what I hear my father saying sometimes you need to shut up your ears from men hallelujah praise the lord look at this it gives you the joy of salvation because now the spirit of god is in you You have the direction of God. He says, you are old men on rim rims. <coughs> and not to guard in rims. Dreams that have the mind of God. Dreams which have come from the Lord. They have a pure mind. When you don't have a pure mind that is connected to God and to the spirit of God, you become a diviner. Praise the Lord. You are young men who see visions. They will tell you this is what the Lord has shown me. This is what I've seen us doing. My God. You know, I am praying that we get to the point when we are coming to church. And young men, they are coming and they are saying, you know what, Apostle? This is what I've seen us doing. I have seen us going to this place and preaching the gospel. Wachana na wale, wanaonanga. You know, kuna watu wana kuonanga ukifagiriwa na manji ya mfua. I pray, may you receive the spirit of God. May there be spiritual visions. May there be real dreams in Jesus' name. Oh my God. If there is anybody here who every time you are troubled by demonic dreams, I cut them off from today. Those nightmares, I cut them off from today in the name of Jesus. But the Lord will visit you in dreams. Can somebody say amen? Number four. Spiritual restoration makes you. Oh, number three, I said that spiritual restoration, restoration restores everything else. When you're restored in the spirit, in your heart, you're restored before God. Let me tell you somebody, brothers and sisters, life is about not about effort. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Life is not about too much effort, even though effort is good. Life is about God's blessing. Are we going together? What makes life easy, it is the blessing of God upon your life. It is not too much work, even though work is a blessing from God. What to restore everything in your life, it is not a lot of work. It is you being in the will and in the purpose of God. Probably there are people you need to disconnect from. Probably you need to be deliberate to change your company. Probably you need to choose the right people to work with. Hallelujah. The day before yesterday, on Friday, I met somebody, a friend of mine, and there is this something that had happened with this Mfanyikazi. And they felt now we want to take him to the police. And they had good lessons. But after listening to them, I told them, no. I don't think that is the best thing to do. Everybody was, as was telling them, go to the police. And I told them, I think you can do something different. 
What do you why do you what do you want to achieve by taking this person to the police? You know everybody saying bra 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 and we talked and I said me I think if your main thing is to release this person, release them, be different, don't do evil because they have done you evil. Release him and bless him and give him a warning. And we talked and they were undressed going to the police so they changed their mind. And therefore, I spoke to them after two minutes and I told them, now that is what happens when you have the right people or the wrong people in your life. The people you are with determines what you will become in the days to come. You may be doing well right now, but you hand into addiction because of the people you are with. You hand into trouble because of the people you work with. Not because you are a bad person, but because the people you end with. Look at this. Some people are telling him, telling them, go to the police. And they are convincing and the person is ready going to the police. But another person comes and says, I think that's not a good idea. And he says, and I think you are right. Changes their mind. Some of you, you need discernment so that you may get to know the people who are in their, your life, whether they are causing you harm or they are taking you to a place of blessing. May you see into your future. I say, may you see into your future. I'm about to finish. So restoration will bring you or, or, or cause everything else to start falling into place when you're restored in the spirit. So the greatest thing you should be desiring is that God may restore your heart to him. Don't just be with him physically. Be with him spiritually. Let your heart be to him. Number four, spiritual restoration makes you a man that God can use. A man, spiritual restoration makes you a man or a vessel that is useful in the hands of God. It's not about pride. It's not about your, 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 you know, there are so many people, they are serving God because they are building your future. Listen, some of us, we are not serving God to build our future. We are not serving God to earn a living. We are serving God because we earn the calling of God and we want to do His purpose. So we are serving God because we are a vessel in His And sometimes it is not pleasant. Sometimes it's not enjoyable. Sometimes it is there is pressure. Sometimes there is rejection. Sometimes we feel we are in Nineveh. But we choose we are not going down to Taoshis. That's why even when you make a mistake in the eyes of the Lord, you'll be like David and say, Lord, it is unto you. I have sinned, but I would rather always be in your hands. I call you back to spiritual restoration. Become a vessel that is useful in the hands of God. Don't just become somebody who people can celebrate. Don't become somebody who men can say, you know, you are good, you are our hero. It's one thing being a hero. It is another thing being in the hands of God. It gives you a genuine desire and the joy of serving God. It gives you a genuine desire and joy of serving God. One of the things that starts happening when your heart is getting messed up is if you are serving God before, you start feeling like you don't want to serve him. You start feeling like you don't want to be close to him. You start feeling, you start getting excuses. You know now, I have made up my mind I will not do this one again because of this. But when there is restoration, when the spirit of God in you is in you, you know what happens is this, you always want to do that which God will rejoice when he sees you doing it. It's not about you. May you get to that point where my life is not about you. But it's about God. It's about God. You get to that point whereby you say, even all oh, what I have is about God. And you know, at that point you become a person that God will be proud of blessing. 
Don't just seek from blessing so that you build a big story house. Seek from blessing that you may serve the Lord. When your heart is restored to God, you have no trouble releasing your money to him. When your heart is restored to God, you have no time spending your time in what belongs to him. When your heart is restored to God, you have no trouble and you are in pain because of him. When your heart is restored to God, even shame cannot push you away from his presence. Spiritual restoration gives you a genuine <coughs> and deep joy and the desire of serving the Lord. Let me speak these three things very quickly that will sustain you. Let me talk about them next time. Let me talk about them next time. But listen. I pray that in your heart the spirit of God will bring real restoration. It is the spiritual restoration that will make you wake up in your house to pray. It is spiritual restoration that will make you fast when it has not been announced in the church. It is a spiritual restoration that will make you say, I want to go and spend some time in the church. Spiritual restoration. It is spiritual restoration that will make other things be restored to you without you having to go to witches. It is spiritual restoration that will make you enjoy the goodness of God without you being weakened. If you're willing and you're obedient, you enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Spiritual restoration, the last point, will make you a faithful believer. Spiritual, when you're restored within you, you want to be faithful to God in every way. You are not waiting for anyone to push you into faithfulness. You are not waiting for everyone. You are not watching what others are doing. There's something that comes up from within you. Jumble in a toka daniako. And you feel within yourself. No, I cannot fail God. No, I cannot let God down. No, I cannot do what is against God. I will be faithful. Even that's where you get to a point where you say, No, I cannot eat God's money. I'll pay tithe. Because you are restored within yourself. And I pray in Jesus name. That God brings you to this place. God brings you to this place. Some of you you need to remember. How you used to be. And cry out to the Lord and say Lord restore me. Some of you you know even right now. You may be going down to Tarshish. You may have bought and bought in jo at, and go to Pastoral Joppa. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that God Almighty will touch you uh, right now. The Spirit of God will touch you right now and get restored to Him and say, God, I want to get back. God, I want to serve you. I will not wait for anybody to push me. I will not wait for anybody to encourage me. I want to be available. I want to do what you want. I will give myself to serve you. May we rise up on our feet in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want you to just lift up your hands in the presence of the Lord and talk to him and tell him, Lord, let's talk me today. Restore me today. Just open up your mouth in the presence of the Lord, everybody. Just talk to him and tell him, Lord, my heart be restored. My spirit be restored. Just talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Open up your mouth, everybody, and talk to him. I am sure that everybody, in one way or the other, God has spoken to you. I'm sure that the spirit of the Lord has spoken to you. I'm sure, I'm confident that the voice of the Lord has come to you. Just talk to him. Just talk to him. Open up your mouth and talk to him and tell him, Lord, restore me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Make me a vessel you can use. Make me a faithful believer. 
I want to have joy serving you. In the name of the Lord, everybody pray. Oh, God Almighty, everybody pray. I don't know what is it that is making you go down the route you're not supposed to go through. Oh, Zakara Bazora Mashara Bayanda. Riko Pashana Mando Bazora La. Ilaba Soko Rosetta Bakara Bashia. Everybody pray. I want to hear you. Lift your voice before the Lord and talk to Him. And talk to Him. Talk to Him. Talk to Him. Don't be a religious man. Don't be a religious woman. Be a spiritual woman. And raise your voice and cry to Him and tell Him, Lord, I am here. I am here. Restore me, Lord. Even as you restore things in my life. Even as you restore finances in my life. Restore me, my spirit. Restore me in my heart. Restore me in your purpose over my life. In the name of Jesus.